In many countries, forestry scientists are worrying about their trees. This healthy plantation in Lancashire sits in a valley. A mile up the hill is another, planted in the same year, 1955, with the same kind of trees, Sitka spruce. But these trees are only half the height of the ones down in the valley. And in the last five years, the branches of the trees up here have grown only half as much as those down below. Some trees have even died. What might be killing the trees? This lake in Sweden used to be full of fish. Now there are none. What could be killing the fish? Even stone doesn't seem to be safe. These memorials are being eaten away. What can be eating away the stone? Can it be the rain? Can rain be damaging the stone, the fish and the forests? Some people put all the blame on acid rain. Politicians and journalists, are they right? What can we see with a scientific eye? And what do they mean by acid rain? Acids are corrosive liquids. Hydrochloric acid will corrode or attack lumps of marble. Coins, like this 1P piece, are attacked by nitric acid. And within a minute or so, there isn't much left. Sulfuric acid attacks ordinary sugar. And your clothes if you're not careful. But although it's dangerous stuff, sulfuric acid can also be useful. In cars, for instance, car batteries won't work. They won't deliver any electricity until they're filled with sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is powerful and dangerous, but we use milder acids all the time. Acetic acid, sometimes called vinegar, has a sour, acid taste. And because it's an acid, it's useful for pickling onions. Rhubarb is full of acid. That's why it has such a sour taste. When you stew it, why do you think it leaves the saucepan so shiny and clean? What other foods and drinks and household things might be acids? Which ones taste sour? What scientific test could you do to sort out household liquids into those that are acids and those that are not?
Which of these liquids do you think might be acids? How could you use the scientific method to find out? One way is with litmus paper. Litmus is an indicator that goes blue when the liquid isn't an acid and red when it is. Most cola drinks are acids. Some people say that they rot your teeth because acids are corrosive. How could you find out whether that's true? This is a human tooth. What do you think will happen if it's put into the cola and left there overnight? After a night in the acid cola, this tooth has turned brown. What other tests could you do to check for damage? What effect do you think the same acid cola will have on a piece of meat? After a couple of days, the meat doesn't look very different, but it must have begun to break down because there's brown, meaty sludge in the bottom of the beaker. There's acid in your stomach, which helps to break down and digest your food. This film shows the inside of the human stomach. We're looking down into the stomach from the top and you can see the acid at the bottom. This is hydrochloric acid and we need it to digest our food. In fact, we couldn't live without it. But what about acid rain? How can rain become acid? If you blow into water coloured blue with litmus, the litmus turns red. In your breath, there's a gas called carbon dioxide that makes the water acid. What about smoke? When some things burn, they produce a gas called sulphur dioxide. What do you think will happen when blue litmus rain falls through it? Factories and power stations produce lots of sulphur dioxide. What do you think this might do to the rain? Will it be the same as the smoke in the jar? Could it be that sulphur dioxide from factory smoke could turn rain acid? And how could you find out whether plants are damaged by sulphur dioxide? Each group is preparing two jars with wet paper towel in the bottom. They plant the same sort of seeds in both jars and one of the jars will be left for the seeds to grow. The seeds in the other jar will be left to grow with some of the same gas that factories produce, sulphur dioxide. The sulphur dioxide is bubbled into water in a small beaker.
and the beaker is carefully placed in the second jar. With sulphur dioxide in the jar, what do you think will happen to the seeds? Two days later, time to check the seeds. The ones left to grow on their own have sprouted and are growing healthily. But the seeds left with sulphur dioxide in the jar haven't even begun to grow. So sulphur dioxide can damage plants. Is this the cause of the acid rain? Is it the acid rain that does all the damage? Maybe, but good scientists never jump to conclusions. That's why they're testing all sorts of plants in controlled conditions, measuring their growth in tents with various different gases. There's surprising evidence from tree rings. This is a slice from a tree that was healthy and 30 years old. This one, the same age, was exposed to sulphur dioxide. But look at this tree. The growth rings are much closer together at the outside. The damage has all happened in the last 20 years. How can that be? Pollution has been going on for at least 100 years since the Industrial Revolution. The problem of acid rain isn't new. The term acid rain was first used in 1872 by the first British air pollution inspector, Robert Angus Smith. So what's increased dramatically in the last 20 years? What might have damaged this fir tree in Germany's Black Forest? Between 1965 and 1985, the number of cars doubled. Cars don't make much sulphur dioxide, but they do produce oxides of nitrogen. How could you find out whether oxides of nitrogen damage the trees? Oxides of nitrogen can react in sunlight to make another dangerous gas called ozone. How can you tell which gases matter? The best way to tackle a complicated problem is the scientific method. The first stage of the scientific method is to make observations and gather information. In 1985, children all over Britain took part in the Watch Acid Drops survey. They collected rainwater in special containers, mounted well off the ground and away from buildings. They took care not to contaminate the rain samples. Why do you think this was important? Why did they put polythene bags on their hands? What would you do to find out how acid the rain is? <coughs> they used indicator paper. On this particular day, the rain was very acid, with a pH of 4.4, near the yellow end of the scale.
They also measured the strength and direction of the wind. And wrote down their observations. All the results from 8,000 children were sent to watch headquarters. What they found was this. When cold east wind blew pollution and snow in from Europe, the yellow patches show it was very acid all over the country. But a few days later, the wind changed and blew rain in from the southwest. This was much less acid, particularly in Cornwall and Devon. Acid rain is a complicated problem. Pollution can be blown hundreds of miles by the wind, and scientists use all sorts of instruments to try and keep track of it. Good scientists use the scientific method to try and reach the truth. Above all, they ask questions. Are fish damaged by acid rain? And what about our lakes and rivers? Are they really acid? Does it matter? How does acid affect the growth of fish, like these baby salmon? What about stonework? This medieval castle has been badly eroded or worn away. Every week, a scientist comes to make observations to try and find out why. Might pollution be involved? The most exposed place is up on the roof, so that's where his equipment is set up. He collects the rainwater and measures how much has fallen during the week. Could the rain be so acid that it's worn away these statues? and eaten holes in the battlements. There's an industrial complex a mile away in the valley. Could sulphur dioxide be causing the damage? Remember, good scientists never jump to conclusions. These tubes are monitoring oxides of nitrogen. Why do you think he uses two tubes? Why does he leave one open so that gas can get in and put a cap on the other. Air is pumped in from outside and checked for pollution. What do you think? What might be the cause of acid rain? What other tests could scientists be doing to solve the problem? And what will happen if we don't? Thank <laughs> you.